नमस्कार गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स एंड ऑल माय ऑनलाइन व्यूअर्स हु हैव जॉइंड ऑन दिस लाइव टेलीकास्ट ऑन द बाय अहिल्या देवी अहिल्या बाय होलकर लेक्चर सीरीज व्हिच इज बीइंग ऑर्गेनाइज्ड बाय द अखिल भारतीय अधिवक्ता परिषद ऑल माय ऑनलाइन व्यूअर्स हु हैव न्यूली जॉइंड अस कैन सब्सक्राइब टू दिस लाइक आवर चैनल एज़ वेल एज़ लाइक दिस वीडियोस एंड शेयर योर थॉट्स ऑन द कमेंट बॉक्स Uh, many of you are already aware that akhil bharti adivakta akhil bharti adivakta parishad has been organizing lecture series during this lockdown period and uh, uh, in the month of april from 20th of april to 2nd of may we had organized the dattopan thing day lecture series uh, where we had uh, many prominent senior advocates uh, legal jurists who had come and shared their views on different topics and various speakers spoke Uh, on on that lecture series we had senior advocates like rakesh dwivedi uh, siddharth luthra kv vishwanathan sajan poveya ji pinky anand r venkat ramni uh, vikramjit banerji asg aishwarya bhati who is also the asg now and also harish salve sir uh, who had all shared their views in that lecture series after the great success uh, in that lecture series we had also conducted a second lecture series which was the nr madhavam lecture series which was in the memory of uh, padma bhushan mr Ma- menon uh, who was instrumental in the uh, formation of the national law schools in india uh, in that lecture series we had four lectures and uh, where prominent speakers included mr k k venu gopal who is the attorney general for india we had mukul rodgi senior advocate we had mahesh jetmalani sir senior advocate as well as we had uh, ravi shankar prasad our honorable law minister who spoke in that lecture series uh, after that we are now coming up with the present uh, lecture series and uh, just to give an introduction to that lecture series i am here uh, ahilya bhai holkar ji was a very prominent personality uh, a woman who was dedicated for the rights and upliftment of people who was though a ruler in the maratha empire but uh, she she had visionary ideas and she she ensured that everyone's legal rights are protected and we we find many uh, instances many stories which indicate that she has been a pioneer as far as protection of rights of women are concerned as well as for protection of general masses are concerned during her tenure and during her era uh, of uh, Uh, the holkar empire uh, in the maratha empire uh, we we find from history that uh, in in those times there was a system prevailing where a man if he had died issueless and his wife his widow wife who wanted to adopt a son she had to pay a heavy tax to the state uh, this practice had continued over a long period of time and after she became uh, the ruler she she ensured that this practice is abandoned and she uh, finally ensured that no taxes are being paid on adoption and women would be entitled to carry out uh, adoption of any child without paying he- any uh, heavy charges fees uh, which which was being levied by the uh, authority or the state uh, she was also very very uh, <clears throat> strict on as far as corruption is concerned we we heard that uh, in cases like where uh, mahitpur chief uh, chief tian who, who had started collecting taxes unlawfully uh, and people had approached uh, her lady and her and had given written applications that he was charging illegal taxes and after hearing everyone she had ensured that the person who was guilty was removed and thereafter no such levy of charges were being carried out in her rule uh, similarly there were cases when complaints were made to mamladar of the chinchwad and where he had uh, tormented a person and where a letter petition was sent to uh, ahilya bai and she took cognizance of that and on that basis she she carried out investigation and came to a conclusion that yes the mamladar was acting beyond his powers and finally punished him uh, we we also find that a rich businessman of khemdas had died issueless and his widow sought the permission to adopt a, a son but the officer concerned demanded a bribe of rupees 3 lakhs the widow had paid the bribe at that time because she she wanted to carry out the adoption 
this was finally uh, informed and conveyed to ahilya bai that this has happened in her kingdom and upon g- getting knowledge of this fact she she ensured that all the money which was taken in bribe was returned back to that lady and it was also ensured that the officer is terminated from her service uh, ahilya bai is also known for uh, the appointments that she made and uh, a lot of judges that she appointed she ensured that uh people of uh, high caliber people of high integrity are appointed on the highest posts so she also ensured that the panchayat system works very effectively and to ensure all that uh, every particular appointment that was being made during her rule was uh, actually carried out after her stamping and after her signature her approval to the entire thing so that is the kind of uh, uh, reform that she tried to bring about in the uh, <clears throat> justice dispensation system as well as appointment of judges are also concerned uh, it is also found that when when there was a dispute between actually the holkers uh, and the uh, <clears throat> other family over there uh, in such cases many a times she was appointed as actually the uh, amicus or the punch, punch to actually uh, resolve the dispute and she would uh, without getting partial to any side was was known to decide all all disputes in a very practical and pragmatic manner this was the kind of role she has played and therefore in her tribute we have named this lecture series uh, uh, moving forward with the lecture series we have very prominent speakers here today so i'll not waste uh, further time i'll request uh, meera jain ji to take over the entire function now thank you थैंक्स नचिकेता जी आप सभी को मेरा नमस्कार मैं अखिल भारतीय अधिवक्ता परिषद की ओर से देवी अहिल्या बाई होलकर लेक्चर सीरीज के उद्घाटन व्याख्यान के लिए आप सभी पार्टिसिपेंट्स का हार्दिक स्वागत करती हूँ आज के इनागरल लेक्चर का विषय है रोल ऑफ द लीगल सिस्टम एज कस्टोडियन ऑफ वीमेंस राइट्स महिला अधिकारों के संरक्षक के रूप में कानून व्यवस्था की भूमिका विमेंस राइट्स जब हम विमेंस राइट्स की बात करते हैं तो विमेंस राइट्स से हमारा मतलब क्या है किस बात के लिए लड़ रहे हैं हम सदियों से और आज तक भी लड़ते ही आ रहे हैं कभी इक्वल वेजेस के लिए कभी एजुकेशन के लिए कभी शादी के बाद की अपनी व्यक्तिगत पहचान के लिए कभी फोर्स मैरिज फोर्स प्रेगनेंसी फोर्स एबॉर्शन कभी फोर्स स्टरलाइजेशन और कभी जेंडर बेस्ड वायलेंस के डर के खिलाफ लड़ते लड़ते 20वीं सदी तक आ पहुंचे महिलाओं ने कभी कुछ अतिरिक्त नहीं मांगा क्या मांगा कुछ मानवीय अधिकार सिर्फ इतना कि उन्हें भी इंसान समझा जाए तो कहाँ गलत है कुछ इसमें शताब्दियां बीत गई हैं न्याय व्यवस्था के प्रारंभ को किंतु हमेशा उसके तरीके अलग थे जरूरतें अलग थीं समाज की व्यवस्था के अनुरूप ही अधिकारों और दायित्वों का निर्धारण होता था लेकिन एक बात तय थी हमेशा से तय रही और वो ये कि महिलाओं के अधिकारों को उंगलियों पर गिना जा सकता था कुछ मामलों में तो पुरानी व्यवस्था आज भी नहीं टूट पाई है मगर फिर भी संपत्ति में महिलाओं को अधिकार मिलना पॉक्सो एक्ट का अस्तित्व में आना विवाहोपरांत अपना सरनेम न बदलना और तीन तलाक की व्यवस्था का समापन आदि बताता है कि महिलाओं की सुरक्षा और अधिकारों के नियम बदल रहे हैं और महिला अधिकारों के क्षेत्र में एक क्रांति ने करवट ली है जिसका एक ही कारण है एक ही आधार है हमारी कानून व्यवस्था का महिला अधिकारों के संरक्षक के रूप में अपनी अधिकारिता का सफल प्रयोग और आज की इस वेबिनार में हम इसी बात पर विस्तार से चर्चा करेंगे दीज आर द हिस्टोरिक वेबिनार्स व्हेन डिस्टिंग्विश्ड डिग्नेटरीज फ्रॉम फार एंड नियर हैव गैदर्ड टुगेदर एट दिस मोमेंट टू जॉइन अस आर डिस्टिंग्विश्ड गेस्ट learned advocates and other participants have been good enough to cast aside 
all the consideration of personal comfort and convenience and respond wholeheartedly to our invitation. This gathering and webinar of the distinguished judges, jurists, lawyers, and other participants on this portal constitutes an impressive demonstration of national unity in the realm of law. I feel particularly honored and gratified that Honorable Judge Mrs. Meenakshi El Mehtaji is with us today. She belongs to the glowing galaxy of bench of Punjab and Haryana High Court Chandigarh. I extend a warm welcome to her ladyship. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Neeru. Thank you. Sri Sudhir Nandaraj Jogji, Senior Advocate, Delhi High Court, and Ms. Surinder Kaurji, Senior Advocate, Jammu and Kashmir High Court, have also been kind enough to lend the grace to this webinar by their precious presence. I welcome you, sir. I welcome you, ma'am. Dhanivad. Now, I would like to invite Advocate Karan Bhadwadji from Chandigarh to tell us more about Honorable Judge Mrs. Minakshi Al Mehtaji. Now, over to Karan Bhadwadji. Karanji. Thank you, Neeraji. Friends, our guest for today has been serving the cherished pillar of democracy, that is judiciary, as a judge for last more than three decades, precisely for more than 33 years now. Honorable Mrs. Justice Minakshi Aymeta was born to, just, to educationist Prem Lata and engineer B. D. Girdhar on 9th of March, 1964 at Hisar. Alumni of Kurukshetra University, Justice Mehta did her Bachelor in Arts and obtained LLB degree in 1985. She was an extremely bright student and was awarded University Medal and Mahasha Banarsi Das Gupta Gold Medal for securing first position in LLB examinations. Judiciary was her calling, and in October 1987, she was selected and joined as sub judge come judicial magistrate in Haryana. She was designated as chief judicial magistrate in 1998. In 2002, she was promoted as additional district and session judge and served as such at several places in the state of Haryana. In September 2013, she was designated as district and sessions judge. Friends, she also presided over the industrial tribunal and also remained legal remembrancer come administrative secretary to the government of Haryana, law and legislative department. Friends, despite a demanding and busy schedule as a judge, Justice Mehta completed her master's in law, LLM, in 2016. On 28th of November 2019, she was elevated as Judge of Honorable Punjab in Haryana High Court. During this period, for almost a year, Justice Mehta authored landmark judgments on diverse fields of law. Friends, on behalf of Akhil Bharatiya Adivakta Parishad, I take immense pride in inviting our esteemed speaker and guest, Honorable Justice Minakshi I. Mehta, to give inaugural speech of Devi Ahilya Bhai Holkar Lecture Series on today's topic, role of the legal system as custodian of women's right. Honorable Justice Mehta. A very pleasant evening to all of you. I feel honored and privileged to have been given this opportunity to address you all on a women-centric issue that our society, very sadly, faces even in the 21st century and the ways to reform it. I believe man and woman stand equal in all walks of life and I'm glad to be sharing my views and opinions with you all in this regard. As women, we just need equal opportunities in all fields, enabling us to stand independent and establish an identity of our own. Since this event is being held in the honor of Mahalia Bhai Holkar, therefore I deem it appropriate to say a few words about her also. Ahilya Bhai ruled over 
Bihar in Central India for almost 30 years. This has become legendary as a period during which perfect order and good governance prevailed and the people prospered. She was a very able ruler and organizer, highly respected during her lifetime and considered as a saint by the grateful people after her death. An English poem written by Joanna Bellet in 1849 reads, For 30 years her peace and blessing did increase. She was by every time, old and young, yeah, even the children at their mother's feet are taught such homely rhyming to repeat. In latter days from Brahma came to rule our land, a noble dame. Kind was her heart and bright her fame and Ahilya was her honored name. She was a great Gandha lady who still affords the finest example of goodness and virtue. Here I would like to add that every female is bestowed with immense inherent power in herself by Mother Nature, but the irony of the system has made women seek refuge in the legal system to get their rights accepted and acknowledged by the society at large. Swami Vivekananda once said, just as a bird cannot fly with one wing, nation cannot march forward if the women are left behind. An old Sanskrit thing, which has held relevance through centuries and continues to hold low, is yatra naryastu pujyante ramante tatra devata yatra tastu na pujyante sarvast trafala kriya. This means where women are honored, divinity blossoms, and where they are dishonored, all actions, no matter how noble the same may be, remain unfruitful. After 30, 73 years of independence and after 70 years since the inception of the world's largest written constitution, here we stand, still fighting for the women's rights. The country where goddesses are worshipped, but the women are still crying out for respect. What an irony, isn't it? All over the world, Women were subjected to exploitations and unfair treatment, and these were so ingrained into the social mindset and system that a serious rethought or recognition of such a serious issue never gained attention for a pretty long time. Though the women have been bestowed with the inherent unique qualities, such as compassion, patience, and capability to attain motherhood. And one can also not feign oblivion to their contribution to society. But in spite of these facts, they are amongst the most disadvantaged section of society. In our country, though on one hand, women are considered to be the epitome of Shakti, the power, but in fact, they are the ones who are never given their due respect. <clears throat> women enjoyed a very respectable, honorable position in the society in ancient times, but our society progressed ironically. Yes, ironically, we are in the position of women kept on deteriorating over the time. History reveals that in Satyuga, enjoyed a privileged position, they were treated as better halves as Grah Lakshmi's, there were no bars or veil system. They used to participate widely in the religious and social affairs equivalent to men. This was indeed a golden era for women. Then came the Treta Yuga. And with the advent thereof, the world witnessed the of Treta, 
which ultimately resulted in the tragic end of ravana then dwapar yuga followed and during this period draupadi was born publicly animated which resulted in the in india which lasted for nearly 500 years saw a grave setback to the rights of women which were inhumanely curtailed they were confined to four walls and their social participation went on a steep decline thereafter there was a surge of indian social reformers who rose to the occasion to do away with the several prevalent social levels and encouraged women to come forward their meaningful and active participation in all social spheres the contributions of raja ram mohan rai jyoti rao govind rao phule swami dayanand saraswati mahatma gandhi and swami vivekanand cannot be ever forgotten a catena of reformative enactments were brought in to uplift the status of women even by our oppressive colonial rulers sati pratha abolition act 1889 hindu widow remarriage act 1929 child marriage restraint act 1929 which was also popularly known as sharda act hindu women right to property act 1937 were some of the examples of such kind of legislation from pre constitutional era with the spread of education the women gradually started realizing the importance as well as necessity of their role in the national movement and reconstruction of the new independent india they actively participated in the freedom movement to name a few prominent women revolutionaries these were any besant sarojini naidu rani lakshmi bai and durga devi vohra in the post independence era a huge bundle of rights immunities and privileges had been conferred upon the indian women all the three pillars of the state have fully contributed in strengthening the status of women the constitution of india is a living and organic document which not only guarantees equality to women but also empowers the state to adopt special measures of positive discrimination in favor of women for neutralizing the cumulative socio economic educational and political disadvantages faced by them since long fundamental rights especially as enshrined in articles 14 15 and 16 amongst others ensure equality before the law and equal protection of law prohibition of discrimination against women on the grounds of religion race caste gender or place of birth and the guarantee of equality of opportunity to all the women in the matters relating to employment besides the fundamental rights the constitution through its directive principles of state policy also strives to ensure adequate means of livelihood and equal pay for equal work under article 39 article 51a also imposes a fundamental duty on every citizen to renounce the practices which are derogatory to the dignity of women certain progressive means were included to ensure equal participation of women in the decision making process in the democracy by way of 73rd and 74th amendment of the constitution which provide for the reservation of at least one third seats for women in the panchayats as well as the municipalities we are indeed grateful to the brains behind the progressive enactments which aim to empower the women of our country for example 
the dowry prohibition act of 1961 which is an attempt to deal effectively with the meanness of dowry system maternity benefit act of 1961 which entitles a women employee to get maternity leave medical allowances and nursing breaks etc equal remuneration act of 1976 which provides for payment of equal recompense to men and women workers the indecent representation of women prevention act was brought in 1986 which prohibits the indecent representation of the women through advertisement or in publications writings paintings figures or in any other manner then in 1990 National Commission for Women's Act was enacted by virtue of which a statutory body called the National Commission for Women was established to protect the rights of the women in India and provide a voice for their issues and concerns the acts such as the prohibition of child marriage act 2006 which came into force in the year 2007 renders the marriage of the girls below the age of 18 years and the boys below the age of 21 years as punishable sexual harassment of women at workplace prevention prohibition and redressal act of 2013 sought to ensure women's safety and their protection from sexual harassment at their places of work all these legislative measures have helped to empower the women and have sought to secure to them the equal rights and standing in the society gender equality has always been an elusive concept in the history trodden with imped- impediments of narrow mindedness of the society which took fiendish delight in suppressing the women's rights judiciary being the custodian of the rights of the citizen woke up to the need of the hour to safeguard and protect the rights of the women to free them from the shackles of the age old vicious traditions and conservative mindsets of the society at large for them the earliest case in india pertaining to the rights of women was dattatreya versus state wherein it was held that the educational institutions established by the state exclusively for women or the reservation of seats for women in a college do not violate article 151 then in the path breaking judgment rendered by honorable supreme court titled as air india versus nargesh mirza it was held that the regulation of air india pertaining to the termination of the services of an air hostess if she were to get pregnant within 4 years of service was arbitrary and unconstitutional this judgment is etched in the history of women's rights as an apostle for organizations to regulate the working conditions of women employees at par with their male counterparts the landmark judgment as handed down in the case titled as vishakha and others versus state of rajasthan and others is another step forward towards the protection of working women wherein the court laid down certain guidelines to regulate the condition of the working women and directed that these guidelines and norms would be strictly observed in all workplace places for preservation and enforcement of the right to gender equality of working women this verdict culminated in the act of 2013 which i have already mentioned further in miss geetha hariharan and another versus reserve bank of india and another it was held that both the parents the father as well as the mother are the natural guardians of a minor hindu child and the mother cannot be said to to be natural guardian only in the eventuality of the demise of the father 
as that would not only be dis in discriminatory, but also against the welfare of the child, which is the pivotal purpose for legislating the Hindu Minority and Guardianship Act of 1956. Equal rights and dignity of women in religious aspects has recently garnered great importance in social life and in the legal sphere. In Shaira Bano versus Union of India, it has been held that the practice of triple talaq is unconstitutional and violates the fundamental rights of Muslim women. The majority also found that the practice of triple talaq is not essential to Muslim religion. Then in Sabrimala Temple entry case titled as Indian Young Lawyers Association versus State of Kerala, the Honorable Apex Court held that the temple's practice of excluding women was unconstitutional. It was also held that the practice violated the fundamental right to freedom of religion for female worshippers. Then in the recent case of Vinita Sharma and versus Rakesh Sharma, the apex court, after discussing the law of creation of Mitakshara Koparsinari and the nature of the rights of the members of a Koparsinari under the Hindu law, proceeded to hold the right of the daughters under the amending act of 2005 to be retroactive rather prospective. Then in secretary ministry of defense versus Babita Punia, honorable Supreme court upheld the principle of equality and observed that the women officers are, are eligible for permanent commission in defense services. The law undoubtedly has been the custodian of women's rights since long. But the concern is whether these legislative measures and judicial responses are enough to secure the women their inherent but lost rights? The answer to this question is partly yes and partly no. Yes, the legislative measures grant express rights to the women and judicial responses ensure that these measures are contemporarily suitable, but the problem lies in our social setup, which is still reluctant and has a lackadaisical approach to the progressive changes. Education, I believe, is the most effective measure to awake the masses. By education, I mean effective education, both at the academics as well as parental level. Then social awareness towards women's rights can act as a major influencing mode. The need of the society as a whole is to realize that gone are the days where the permanent fate and mission of a woman was only to fulfill the noble and benign duty as wife and mother. It is much more. A woman can effectively manage both her household as well as her professional responsibilities whatsoever. Till the time the women won't raise their voice, the legislations and the judicial responses cannot make much difference. It is about time that women stand up for their own rights, which can be achieved by securing education coupled with financial independence. Last but not the least, the legislature, the judiciary, and the society have to join hands together to work for the comprehensive development of our nation. Women make up to almost half of the population, and it is in our own interest and welfare that the women receive their long lost inherent rights to the fullest. I would like I would further like to add that women are already empowered. The only concern is that they need conducive environment to identify, acknowledge, and activate their inherent power. History proves that whenever the women have been given the opportunity, they have excelled, performed at par with men. The latest example being the recent recruitment of judicial officers in the states of Punjab and Haryana, where women have surprisingly outnumbered the men. 
we must become the part of the legacy that rani ahilya bai rani lakshmi bai savitri bai phule and many such crusaders have left for us i would like to end my views by remarking that be the change you want to see thank you have a wonderful and thoughtful evening ahead thank you ma'am थैंक यू मैम आपने जेंडर इक्वालिटी और जीवन के हर फेज में इक्वल पार्टिसिपेशन पर जोर दिया आपने कहा कि जरूरत है अपने अंदर की क्षमता को जगाने की आपने विषय पर अपने बहुमूल्य विचार रखे अपना ज्ञान अपने अनुभव हम सब के साथ साझा किए मुझे विश्वास है सभी उनसे लाभान्वित हुए होंगे इसके लिए मैं आपका हार्दिक धन्यवाद करती हूं और उम्मीद करती हूं कि ऐसे मौके हमें बार बार मिलते रहें थैंक्स अगेन मैम नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू इनवाइट मिस रिद्धिमा गौर जी फ्रॉम दिल्ली टू गिव इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ सीनियर एडवोकेट श्री सुधीर नंदराज जोग जी नाउ ओवर टू मिस रिद्धिमा गौर जी रिद्धिमा जी धन्यवाद धन्यवाद जी और आप सभी को मेरा नमस्कार It's indeed a pleasure for me to give an introduction of senior advocate Sri Sudhir Nandal Jogi. Sir is a man who needs no introduction, but still I am here as a protocol, and I'll start. Sir joined the legal profession in the year 1989, and has been practicing before various courts and tribunals throughout the country, and has appeared in nearly all the high courts of India. Sir was enrolled as an advocate of record of the Supreme Court of India. in the year 1996 and continued as such till his designation as senior advocate by the high court of delhi in the year 2009 sir is one of the few lawyers who is practicing and who practiced in all the branches of law be it civil criminal arbitration telecom banking constitutional and the list is never ending with this with this i would like to request sir to please come over the virtual stage and enlighten us all with his kind words sir the virtual stage is all yours dhanyawad honorable justice minakshi ai mehta office bearers and members of the akhil bhartiya adivakta parishad ladies and gentlemen it is a matter of great satisfaction that the akhil bhartiya adivakta parishad is starting the devi ahilya bai holkar lecture series the same commemorates the memory of one of the finest rulers of india whose reign saw a happy and a prosperous period for her subjects the fact that she was a lady only adds to her stature and goes on to show what women can achieve by sheer grit and determination the topic for today's deliberation role of the legal system as custodian of women's right is apt in today's day and age when the women of the country are marching forward in their quest for equality in all spheres of society and are fulfilling their aims and aspirations it is said that sexism and discrimination are as old as the human race and women have been suffering on these counts for centuries however history is also replete with examples of women who have fought against a vested patriarchal system and their efforts have benefited the entire women kind Maya Angelou the famous american poet had said each time a woman stands for herself she stands for all women and the benefits of which are available to women kind not only in the country but all over the world even prior to the independence of the country due to the efforts of far sighted persons reforms were brought about to protect women and grant them their rights and to free them from the shackles of 
customary laws which had been made in a patriarchal system. The demand for a uniform civil code dates back to the colonial period in India. The customary law discriminated against women by depriving them of inheritance, custody of children, remarriage, divorce. Reform of local, social, and religious customs were made. Justice Mehta referred to the Bengal Sati Regulation Act, which was thereafter extended to India, is one of the prime examples of how a vested system which was completely anti-women was fought and successfully efforts of the social reformers led to activation of the legislative process for outlawing regressive customs by statutory enactments. The Indian Succession Act of, 1980, of 1865 was one of the first laws to ensure women's economic security and attempted to shift the personal laws to the realm of civil law from religious customary practices. The Hindu Widow Remarriage Act, the Indian Marriage Act, the Special Marriage Act, were efforts of reform which granted far greater rights to women than traditional customary laws. Subsequent enactments like Married Women's Property Act of 1923, the Hindu Inheritance Removal of Disabilities Act, the Hindu Women's Right to Property Act of 1937, recognized a Hindu woman's right to property, which led to economic empowerment of women. I would refer to Justice Mehta's views, where she has rightly said that economic empowerment is the need of the hour, as that is what will enable women really to fight the shackles in which a patriarchal system seeks to place them. With the independence of the country, the Constituent Assembly, tasked with the framing of the country's constitution, was fully alive to the needs of the women of India and took care to ensure that the constitution protects and furthers their interests. The Indian constitution, through the fundamental rights, the fundamental duties, and directive principles, guarantees equal rights to all citizens and equal protection of laws, which includes all women in the country. In fact, there are several provisions in the constitution that embody the spirit of gender equality and lay the ground for framing policies, mechanisms, safeguards, and programs and policies for the protection, and more importantly, empowerment of women in the country. The Indian constitution upholds women's rights through the right to equality, the right to live with dignity, and the right to freedom from discrimination. Whereas Article 14 grants to every person, which includes women, equality before the law and equal protection of laws, Article 16 mandates equality of opportunity to all citizens, including women, in matters relating to employment or appointment to any office under the state. However, one of the articles which according to me, is the most important article for women empowerment, is Article 15, Subclause 3, which enables a state legislature or parliament to make special laws and provisions for the benefit of women, which is not only to protect the rights of the women, but to grant them such special favors as may be required to enable them to compete on equal terms with the men. Similarly, the directive principles, particularly Article 39, provides that the state direct its policy towards securing that all citizens, and it specifically uses the word 
men and women equally have the right to an adequate means of livelihood. This only shows that the framers of the constitution were fully aware of the needs of women and had the foresight to lay down such principles in the constitution acting on which the state legislatures would thereafter go on to make such laws which would be for the benefit and empowerment of women. They also made a provision for adequate protection and provision of an equal share in the country's wealth, assets, resources, and opportunities for women so that they can attain their due place in society. Thereafter, as Justice Mehta very rightly referred to, even when amendments were made to the Constitution, the rights of women were furthered by reservation of seats in panchayats and local bodies for women, which also provides for reservation in the offices of chairpersons in the panchayats, which is necessary to ensure that women at the grassroots level are involved in the formulation of policy and implementation of the same. The makers of the constitution were fully aware and conscious to the needs of women. And the vision of the makers of the constitution was duly given effect to by the legislatures of the union and the states, which from time to time have enacted various laws for the protection of women and for advancement of their interests. The first of such expressions were the reforms of the Hindu law in 1956 by enactment of the Hindu Marriage Act, the Hindu Succession Act, the Minority and Guardianship Act, and the Hindu Adoptions and Maintenance Act. It freed a large segment of India's population, namely women, from the restrictions of religion-based laws and customs, which, as I had stated earlier, having been made by a pat patriarchal system, were all geared to keep women under subjugation. These rights, uh, these laws were the first steps in emancipation of the women and their empowerment against a patriarchal society and a patriarchal order. Thereafter, as time progressed, women-centric laws addressing the concerns of women were passed. As Justice Mehta very rightly referred that there is a need to do further. And she also referred for the need of education. It becomes imperative for all of us to ensure that knowledge about the laws and provisions which protect women and their rights have to be spread so that not only women can use their protective measures for their personal safety, but also for their advancement. As a parent, as a wife, a daughter, employee, and a woman, these are rights set in place to protect you and it is important that everybody is aware about them. I would refer to some of them during the course of my discussion and also the interpretations placed by the honorable courts. One of the most important steps was the setting up of the National Commission for Women in the year 1990. It being a statutory body which represents the rights of women in India and provides a voice for their issues and concerns. It aims to improve the status of women and has worked for their economic empowerment. Economic empowerment, according to me, would be the most important step after education to enable women to stand on their own and be able to fight a patriarchal system which seeks their subjugation. The constitution framers were fully aware of this and provided in Article 39D 
that there shall be equality of pay amongst men and women. The same was given effect to by the Equal Remuneration Act of 1976, which prevents discrimination in terms of remuneration, salary, pay, or wages. Working women have the right to draw an equal salary as compared to men, besides enjoying all other employment benefits as are available to men. And I'm happy to say that there are many other laws, provisions, and policies which are granting extra benefit to women, which is the need of the hour. Two examples which stand out in the implementation of this is the famous case of the air hostesses, as referred to by Justice Mehta, which struck the very basis of discrimination of women, which was entirely based upon their sex of their being women and had no other basis. The same was struck down by the Supreme Court. Thereafter, very recently, the Supreme Court has also held that all women army officers are eligible for permanent commissions, thus permitting them to be in commanded roles. Women officers are now on par with their male counterpart when it comes to promotions, ranks, benefits, pensions, fortifying their position in the defense sector. The argument which was put forward by the state that such jobs may not be safe for them has been negated by the court, which has acknowledged the ability and the capability of the women of this country to perform the most arduous tasks. While we are on the issue relating to employment, women have the right against harassment at the workplace. And this is a classic case where judicial activism in favor of women has led to legislation. The Supreme Court in Vishaka versus State of Rajasthan laid down guidelines and mechanism for the addressal of grievances of the employees. These guidelines were eventually formalized as legislation, a vital law to protect millions of women who enter the country's workforce every year. The basis of the Supreme Court decision was the unfortunate sexual assault on a social worker, a Sathan in Rajasthan, who was working with the state government to prevent child marriages and was a classic example as to how vested interest to, could go to any length to subjugate women. On the prodding of the Supreme Court, that a suitable law should be made where it would be the duty of the employer and other responsible persons in workplaces and other institutions to prevent sexual harassment. And the Supreme Court also went to define sexual harassment in very wide terms, which have been adopted in the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Act to ensure their safety at the workplace and to, pro and to protect them from sexual harassment. The wide definition would include the use of language, sexual overtones, invasion of private space, subtle touches and inendos, promise of preferential detrimental treatment in employment, threat about the present or future employment, status creating a hostile, intimidating or offensive work environment are all included in the definition of workplace. The aim being that there should be no discrimination, there should be no harassment by explicit or implicit means. Under the Factories Act, there are specific provisions. Under the Shops and Establishment Act, there are special provisions for separate restrooms, toilets to be provided for women. The unfortunate part is that despite these provisions, many a times 
the provisions of these statutes were used not to further the cause of women but the state sought to justify its action of discrimination on the ground that it is seeking to protect the rights of the women in a landmark judgment authored by justice s p sinha relating to the working hours and late night duties by women it was held by the honorable supreme court that it is the duty of the state to ensure that law and order is maintained to enable women to work in all such occupations and at all times as they desire and the plea of their safety cannot be used as an excuse to deny them these rights the recent judgment of the supreme court in the case of the dance bars in maharashtra where the law was interpreted by the supreme court to say that these dance bars would remain open struck at a legislative measure which under the cover of protecting women's rights was actually leading to unemployment of thousands of women this is another example of the courts coming forward to protect the right of women to employment of their choice amongst other provisions which have been made is the maternity benefit act which regulates the employment of women and maternity benefits every woman is entitled to receive maternity benefits which includes maternity leave nursing breaks medical allowance the legislative intent has also been furthered by government policy as now there is a provision of child care leave and government employment to enable women to look after their young children and while i am on this according to me these though ostensibly may seem to be women centric laws are actually society centric laws they further the concept of a family and a family belongs both to the man and the woman the reference to these statutes by me is also being made because the legal system is not just the judicial system the legislative system is as much a part of the of uh, the legal system because the courts will interpret the laws which are made by the legislature and many a times the court decisions also egg the legislature on having made various provisions for economic empowerment of women the laws of the country are fully sensitive to the personal safety of the women and some of the provisions like the right of women against being stalked has seen an amendment where the provisions of the erstwhile section 354 in the indian penal code have been expanded and any act subtle or otherwise which will include trying to establish unwilling contact physically or in any other form of electric of electronic communication physical contact demand for favors or any unwelcome physical verbal or non verbal conduct which would tend to outrage the modesty of a woman has been made punishable and the punishment stand enhanced it will be apt here to mention that even in customary law modesty was an attribute of great rectitude and integrity of the woman which has been accepted and furthered by the statutory legislations which have been enacted one very unfortunate incident had happened in this country about 8 to 9 years back 
which we all refer to as the Nirbhai rape incident, which led to the Criminal Law Amendment Act, where the law was made far more stringent. It provides for the information of sexual offenses to be recorded by a woman officer. The victim is now entitled to be represented by a lawyer from the beginning of the case. The doctors and medical staff have been directed that they should cater to the medical needs of the victim with utmost priority. No hospital can deny conducting medical legal checkup of any victim who has come to the hospital without police referral. But more importantly, to ensure her privacy and that the privacy of a woman is protected, a woman who has been sexually assaulted may record her statement alone before the district magistrate when the case is under trial or in the presence of a female police officer. Prior to that, Section 114A of the Evidence Act was inserted as an outcome of the infamous Mathura rape case where judicial intervention led to a legislative amendment being made. The courts have been fully sensitive to the needs of women in this and the difficulty that a woman who is the subject of sexual assault in forthcoming to disclose everything and to be fighting the system. The courts have gone to the extent to say that the sole testimony of the victim of sexual assault can be the basis of conviction if reliable, thus granting sanctity to the statement of the victim and negating the theory of her being an interested witness. The Honorable Court has further expanded the concept of a sexual assault and has laid down in a number of cases that if the consent of the woman is taken by deception and even on a false promise of marriage or any other false promise, then it would be a void consent in law and the act of the predator would be punishable as an act of rape. The Honorable Court, while being liberal in laying down guidelines where consent could be the basis of quashing of criminal cases, has categorically held that there can be no mediation and no compromise can be reached with the culprit in cases of rape or attempt to rape, thus preventing the rich and powerful predators from subjugating women on the strength of their money and other powers. The Honorable Supreme Court was also very conscious of the degrading ways in victims of sexual assault were being treated when they were brought for their medical care and medical legal checkup. And therefore, in the matter of Lilu versus State of Haryana in the year 2013, this understanding the agony and trauma of a rape victim who had to go through the two finger test to give a character certification, the Honorable Court relying upon a number of precedents in this regard held that this test is a violation of the victim's right to privacy and dignity. The court held that rape survivors are entitled to legal recourse that does not re-traumatize them or violate their physical or mental integrity and dignity. They also went on to lay down that they are entitled to medical procedures to be conducted in a manner commensurate with their right to dignity, their right to privacy, and with their consent. Medical procedures which were cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment were frowned upon by the court 
and the paramount consideration being a gender-based uh, and a respectful treatment of a victim. On the egging of the court, the law also today now stands amended <clears throat> where female victims of sexual assault have the right to keep their identity anonymous and the law prohibits disclosing the name and identity of a woman who is the subject of sexual assault or an act which may outrage a modest. The important, one of the most important judgments is where a petitioner or rape survivor who wished to remain unidentified had approached the Honorable Supreme Court seeking permission to abort her 24-week abnormal fetus. And there was a challenge to the 46-year-old Maternal Termination of Pregnancy Act that did not permit abortion of a fetus after 20 weeks. The Supreme Court, keeping in view the agony of a victim of sexual assault, ruled in favor of the petitioner after the medical board submitted that continuing with the pregnancy would put the mother's life at risk. So as we see with passage of time, the loopholes in the law relating to sexual assault are being filled up both by judicial interpretation and also by legislative enactments. Where the judiciary has played an important role is in the case of acid attack victims. A number of young women are subjected to acid attacks by uh, young men who have scores to settle with them. In Lakshmi versus Union of India, which is a landmark case of proactive judicial activism, on a petition filed by a victim of an asset attack, taking cognizance of the number of cases relating to asset attacks against women on being on the rise, the Supreme Court imposed stringent regulations on the sale of asset in the year 2013. The ruling banned over-the-counter sale of asset. Dealers could sell asset only if the buyer provided a vital, valid identity proof. It was mandatory for the dealer to submit details and it made illegal to sell asset to a person below 18 years. On the prodding of the court, the legislature also moved in and made the provisions of section 326 A and B more stringent. The first time a concept of imposition of a fine on a uh, accused which was to be paid to the victim was introduced. And under this section, any fine which was imposed would be paid to the victim. Further, compensation for asset attack uh, victims was brought in by the addition of section 357B. And a minimum compensation of rupees 3 lakhs was to be given to every asset attack victim. This compensation was in addition to the fine which was to be imposed on a person who is held guilty and punished. Section 357 was inserted mandating that all hospitals, public and private, are required to provide first aid. One important uh, decision which has uh, taken place, though it is not on the judicial or the legislative side, but it is emanating from the National Legal Services Authority, which is headed by the first puny judge of the Honorable Supreme Court, which has framed a policy of grant of compensation to victims of physical assaults, attacks, rapes, acid attacks, and Amounts ranging from rupees 1 lakh to 10 lakh have been provided. And the Honorable Supreme Court has clarified that this scheme is to be used as guidelines.
by special courts and awarding compensation to minor victims till the central government prepares rules. This act of the Honorable Supreme Court is filling in the gaps in the legislation and working proactively for the protection of women and, and advancement of their interests. A unfortunate thing in this country has been the dowry debts, which is nothing else but a patriarchal system which has been uh, practiced for a long duration of time. Many of these provisions have been now made far more stringent and the Honorable Supreme Court has also now in the matter of Lata Singh versus State of Uttar Pradesh gone on to say that not only dowry deaths would be punished but even honor killings uh, is something which is abhorrent to the rights of a woman to choose a life partner. The Honorable Court in Shakti Vaini versus Union of India has further ruled against Khap Panchayats and Assemblies of Village Elders to interfere with the marriage between two consenting adults. Importantly, in all these cases, the court which had propounded the concept of a zero FIR so that there would be no delay in starting the process of investigation, applied them to all victims of uh, uh, assaults of a sexual nature. And the legislature has also now stepped in to provide for the zero effort. Another important aspect is domestic violence to which a woman is subjected in this country. And as Justice Mehta very rightly pointed out, the Supreme Court in a recent judgment has categorically held that the shared household would be the matrimonial house where the woman has been residing. The, the Domestic Violence Act has been held by the Supreme Court in S.C. Ahuja versus Sinai Ahuja, the recent judgment. As a milestone against offenses which are rampant in the nature of domestic violence in this country. The court acknowledging that women face violence in some form or the other almost every day. And the woman has to resign to a fate of a never ending cycle. The protection was granted because the court was of the opinion that domestic violence are cases which are never reported due to social stigma and attitude of women themselves. The earlier view of a restrictive interpretation was uh, uh, set aside and disagreed by the court. Another landmark case is Dhanulal and others versus Ganeshram in the year 2015, where to prevent exploitation of women who've been living together under the same roof in a continuous cohabitation as a couple, even though there was no formal formalization of marriage, the court granted the benefit of such a woman also to all rights to property. Reference has already been made by Justice Mehta to the judgment in Vinita Sharma versus Rakesh Sharma which has expanded the rights of women to HUF property and granted them co personary rights. I will not detail. But more importantly, the Delhi High Court, in a very landmark judgment after this enactment, had held that if a male member of a Hindu undivided family, by virtue of his being the first born eldest, can be the Kalta, so can a female member be. It is an acknowledgement of the capability of women to be performing all duties for the benefit of the family, which any man could do. Needless to mention, the Supreme Court, from a very long duration of time, 
has ruled that a woman can claim her istidhan from her husband and family even if they are not divorced and women can claim istidhan even after the separation so the woman's right to a istidhan has been accepted as the absolute right these cases are not limited only to the hindu religion in mary roy versus state of kerala the supreme court delivered a landmark judgment that granted certain christian women the right to seek an equal share in their father's property overruling the customary law reference has been made by the speakers before me to the case of shaira banu which is the triple talaq case in a very heartening departure from its earlier view in mohammad ahmed versus shah banu which granted limited relief by taking a conservative approach the honorable supreme court in the triple talaq case has held it to be against the basic tenets of the quran but more importantly it had urged the legislature to pass a law which led to the muslim women protection of rights of marriage act which has not only outlawed the practice outlawed the practice but also made it a punishable offense the supreme court has also called for a reassessment of the muslim women act of 86 which requires a muslim man to pay maintenance only during the period of idd these are cases where the courts of the country alive to the needs of women have come forward to protect their interest just as mehta has already referred to the geeta hariyaran matter in a related development the supreme court in the landmark judgment has held that an unwed mother belonging to the christian faith is not bound to disclose the name of the child's father by a act of the executive today when forms are filled up for admission to edu uh, to educational institutions and other things like passports and all the name of the mother has also to be put forth just as mehta had also referred to the sabri wala view i will not uh, detail this but more importantly in a similar case relating to muslims on the prodding of the court the all india muslim personal law board has filed an affidavit in the supreme court stating that the entry of women in mosques is allowed as per islam which is a huge departure from the conservative practice which have uh, which has been going on for a considerable duration of time justice mehta also referred to the right of dignity and decency and freedom from obscenity number of acts are there importantly in state of tamil nadu versus swas kutti led to the first conviction where a victim was harassed by sending defamatory and obscene messages on her online account this is the first case where an online stalking has been taken note of by the courts and the uh, accused has been punished the honorable supreme court in the matter of sehat versus union of india has also directed and monitored the implementation of the prenatal sex determination act and the techniques which is another woman friendly provision whose strict implementation is being monitored by the supreme court but one of the judgments which i consider as the most landmark judgment which upholds the rights and dignity of women is the judgment which held section 497 of the indian penal code as unconstitutional if one were to see the debates which led to the enactment of this section where a man was given a right to complain 
of a sexual misconduct by his wife. The reason given was that a married woman was nothing more than the property of her husband. Such a thing would be a shame in today's day and age. A woman is an equal partner and the Supreme Court relying on her right to equality struck down the said provision in Joseph Shine versus the Union of India. In addition to these things, there are other certain provisions under the Legal Services Authorities Act, which has given women who are victims of assault of any nature, free legal aid and legal services. There are provisions in law where a woman cannot be arrested at night, where she cannot be arrested by a male officer, she cannot be interrogated if there is no woman constable or family members and friends are not present. Women have been given the right to register virtual complaints. Such cases are legion and if one were to list all of them, it would require a huge amount of time. There is paucity of time but I would like to conclude by saying that the Indian judiciary has always played a crucial role in framing and interpreting laws that uphold women's rights and dignity in India. The Supreme Court has played a constructive role in development of rights and jurisprudence and expanding the progressive libertarian and democratic values. The influence of the court in public consciousness is no longer confined to its position as a final arbiter. The Supreme Court has often responded to the needs by mobilization of rights groups and civil society, egging on the liberal thought, egging on the legislature to do its part, and has delivered a number of judgments which have upheld the rights of the women, particularly the right to live in this country with dignity. Having said that, I completely agree with Justice Mehta that though we have traversed a long uh, distance in our journey, we still have a long way to go. And therefore, it is imperative that a national narrative be developed on social front to educate women about their rights and at the same time to sensitize people about the rights of women and the, the need to respect the law. I would conclude by referring to a statement made by Justice Sandra Day O'Connors, the first judge of the US Supreme, first lady judge of the Supreme Court, where speaking on an occasion when the achievements of women were being listed, she said, I am waiting for that day where the achievements are so numerous that we cannot count them anymore. They should be beyond count. I sincerely hope that such a day comes in this country also. Thank you. Dhanyavad. Dhanyavad, sir. You बताया कि महिलाओं के एग्जिस्टिंग अधिकारों के प्रोटेक्शन के साथ उन्हें अन्य अधिकारों को प्रदान करना भी जरूरी है जिनसे वे वंचित हैं इसके अलावा आपने पितृ सत्तात्मक व्यवस्था को बदलने के बारे में भी बात की और इनसे भी ज्यादा जरूरी आपने कहा कि इकोनॉमिक एम्पावरमेंट इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट टू एम्पावर द वेमेन जैसे जैसे कानून की अधिकृत व्यवस्था में महिलाओं के अधिकारों की परिधि उत्तरोत्तर बढ़ी है उसी क्रम को आधार बनाकर आपने उन सभी महत्वपूर्ण बदलावों को अपनी स्पीच में बखूबी कवर किया है आपके द्वारा दी गई महत्वपूर्ण जानकारी के लिए मैं आपका हार्दिक धन्यवाद करती हूँ इसी क्रम में अब मैं आमंत्रित करती हूँ हिमाचल प्रदेश से एडवोकेट सुचित्रा जी को कि वो सीनियर एडवोकेट 
मिस सुरेंदर कौर जी से हम सभी को परिचित करवाएं एडवोकेट सुचित्रा जी धन्यवाद मीरा जी मेरा सभी को सादर नमस्कार आगे की इस कड़ी में मैं जिस शख्सियत का परिचय करवाने जा रही हूं उनके लिए ये शब्द भी शायद कुछ कम होंगे कि जीतूंगा मैं ये खुद से वादा करो जितना सोचते हो कोशिश उससे ज्यादा करो तकदीर भी रूठे पर हिम्मत ना टूटे मजबूत इतना अपना इरादा करो जी हाँ मैं बात कर रही हूँ हमारी अगली सम्मानीय वक्ता अधिवक्ता सुरेंद्र कौर जी का जो कि सरल सौम्य शांतिप्रिय व्यक्तित्व की धनी होने के साथ साथ एक प्रखर और निपुण अधिवक्ता भी हैं। आप जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हाई कोर्ट में एकमात्र वरिष्ठ महिला अधिवक्ता नामित हुई हैं। आपने अपने पेशे में विविध तरह के सिविल क्रिमिनल कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सर्विसेज मैटर डील करने के साथ साथ ही आप समाज में शोषित पीड़ित व जरूरतमंद लोगों को न्याय दिलाने में हमेशा अग्रणी रही हैं जिसमें आपने बहुत सारी पीआईएल आई एल कोर्ट में फाइल की हैं व लोगों को न्याय दिलवाया है आप जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हाई कोर्ट में विभिन्न कमेटी में एज ए मेंबर भी काम कर रही हैं जिसमें की मुख्यतः प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ वुमेन फ्रॉम सेक्सुअल हेरासमेंट एट वर्क प्लेस है आपका भूतपूर्व जम्मू एंड कश्मीर में प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ वुमेन फ्रॉम डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस इंप्लीमेंटेशन में विशेष योगदान रहा है इसके साथ ही डिसेंट्रलाइजेशन रूल्स अमेंडमेंट में आपकी विशेष भूमिका रही है आप आपने पी आई फाइल करके रूल्स में अमेंडमेंट करवा करके जिसमें कि महिलाओं का 15 साल में एक तक एक जगह का राइडर था वो आपने जम्मू कश्मीर में खत्म करवाया है महिलाओं के भरण पोषण की राशि बढ़ाने संबंधित अमेंडमेंट पर आपका मुख्यतः योगदान रहा है जिसमें बच्चों को जरूरतमंदों के लिए आप हमेशा न्याय दिलाने में अग्रणी रही है आपने अंडर ट्रायल प्रिजनर जिनको कि स्वास्थ्य रहन सहन खान पान संबंधित अच्छी सुविधाओं का आपके स्टेट में नहीं होना पाया गया था इसके लिए आपने बहुत बड़ी लड़ाई लड़ी और उनको मूलभूत सेवाओं को उपलब्ध करवाया और रेगुलर डॉक्टर जो कि महीने में एक आधी बार जेल में आता था आपने रेगुलर डॉक्टर की अपॉइंटमेंट जेल में करवाई इसके साथ साथ ही आपकी बहुत सारी लैंडमार्क जजमेंट और रिपोर्टेड केस हमारे बीच में आए हैं जिसमें कि आई ऑफिसर का एक महीने के लिए जेल में रहना जो कि कंटेम्प्ट पिटीशन में था जो कि आज के समय तक ना ही ये जजमेंट पास हुई है इसमें शामिल रहा है आप अनेकों प्रतिभाओं की धनी है हम आपका सानिध्य पाकर कर अपने आप को सौभाग्यशाली महसूस कर रहे हैं मैडम आप आए आपका हार्दिक आभार स्वागत करती हूँ आप अपने शुभ आशीर्वाद से शुभ टिप्पणी से इस लेक्चर सीरीज में अपना समापन टिप्पणी पर उद्बोधन करें मैडम सुरेंद्र कौर जी सीनियर एडवोकेट जम्मू एंड कश्मीर हाईकोर्ट टू यू मैम गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग ऑनरेबल जस्टिस मीनाक्षी मेहता जी सीनियर एडवोकेट डॉक्टर सुधीर जी आई एम ऑनर टू बी ए मेंबर ऑफ दिस आलिया बाई लेक्चर सीरीज बिकॉज शी इज ए लेडी हुज कंट्रीब्यूटेड ए लॉट टूवर्ड्स डिस्पेंसेशन ऑफ द जुडिशियल सिस्टम ऑल्सो आई हैव जस्ट नो हेयर्ड अबाउट दिस आलिया बाई from the speaker who has introduced and the works done by the alia bai uh, alia bai so uh, uh, everybody has spoken everything on every enactments which has been made the law laid down by the supreme court but according to me there is a something more which has to be done now also no doubt 
judiciary plays a important role important and crucial role in the legal system response to the rights of women women but there is something more has to be done for the implementation of the acts which has been made for the law laid on and the rules have been framed so i have to say that there is a domestic violence act which has been enacted in 2005 but in our state then the and state it came in 2010 but in for the implementation of that we have done number of taken number of reports to for the implementation of that act in our state no youth it is union territory but it is implemented though it is implemented in but not in a prospective form it has to be taken no number of uh, calls to be to be improve the systems i think for a victim of a domestic violence there should be something which has to be made because when a lady file a complaint before the court he she has to be aware about the the atmosphere which has to be given the uh, attitude he uh, has to be shown towards that lady because once a lady came to the court no doubt there is a number of in laws there is number of in facts in the act for the welfare of a woman but a woman once he comes to a court he should know all about her rights what is what is her her rights what she has to be do in uh, i think judicial uh, for for implementation of all these these acts the uh, for for a domestic violence victim because if when a lady suffer a uh, domestic violence she her uh, moral has to be laid uh, down my lord then what has to be done that that we to give a cordial atmosphere to make her understand that she has a right she has a right equal right as the husband or the other the member in the family so for that we have to do something i am here to participate in this lecture series to to tell that what has to be more has to be done because supreme court has laid on number of enactments have passed number of judgments like honorable justice minakshi mehta and senior advocate sudhir dr sudhir has mentioned but here for the implementation of of all the laws which has been laid on we have to under make the women understand firstly we have to make them what is their right to identify their right to recognize their right no to there is a equality before law constitution has provided uh, under article 14 of the constitution equality for uh, equality before the law in all the fields though it is educational service or any other field uh, or in the right of property or any other thing but they have to be these laws has to be implemented in prospectives It has to be implemented in prospectives not not that the air the uh, movements no doubt is our india is uh, most of our india is in villages so the village the, the woman who comes to know a court he has know about the right about her rights properly and to make them understand firstly judiciary has to do i think judiciary has to do something to uh, just like a victims for a rape victims the honorable supreme court has laid on some instructions that a, the proceedings are to be done in camera in camera and they have to their statement has to be recorded in presence of a female police officers and all others which dr sudhir has just no mentioned so in case of a victim of domestic violence also i think a se separate court rooms are to be established so that a woman who has to to come in a case against a domestic against domestic violence has to project her grievances in a manner so that he make the honorable court to understand what has happened with her supposing a, a woman appeared before a magistrate in a in a crowded ro uh, court room she is not able to explain what actually has done with her so for for this a separate vice mission is in this uh, that is to for the judiciary to to uh, make a provision for providing a separate court rooms for the victim 
for the uh, cases dealing in domestic violence for the victims of domestic violence so that that has to be taken it decided at a earlier stage here we filed the uh, lady approached the honorable court but the case took number of years to decide their fate so if, if lady need a, a economic uh, uh, as already uh, justice mehta and dr sudhir has said that a, a lady has to be made economically uh, 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 usko uh, have to uh, economically usko sound uh, have to make economically sound how to make economically sound a house wife when she has no source of income so there is a provisions in our uh, criminal procedure code for grant of maintenance under section 125 and in domestic violence for interim maintenance also and in hindu marriage act also that is there is a provisions of interim maintenance the person who came before the court a file an application under section 23 along with an habit uh, affidavit has to be provided a interim maintenance so she feels some easy she feels some self dependent also that she has something to for which she has to be survive or her children has to be survive but here the procedure is so lengthy if a lady comes before in a domestic violence file a complaint then the uh, the other party has to take time to respond to that uh, this complaint then the honorable court has to pass a order for the interim maintenance but here in the act there is a provisions for appointment of protection officer service provider welfare experts also so once the uh, uh, the provision has to be made easy if a person filed a complaint approach the protection officer the protection officer has a right to give the report submit the report and the magistrate after some uh, within the periods of one week has to be take a decision on the on the complaint filed by the domestic event which is duly supported by an report of protection officer to issue an order for of maintenance so that she has to be made economically sound she has to be a, given a faith so that she has a something which for which she has to be come forward or to uh, feed her herself or her children also so there is a make a provisions for this so my submission before the honorable justice minakshi mehta is to take take some recourses to make these provisions effective in the effect to make these provisions effective so that the ladies who come before the court for for settling their grievances for their rights have to get immediately get something because in their uh, there is a provision in work uh, I, this uh, more has been said about the sexual harassment at workplace regarding the women when that act has came into existence when one lady in rajasthan faces some difficulties at the workplace then it has taken years to decide that that she was she was victim of a sexual harassment then the honorable supreme court decided and that act has been came into existence after number of years and, and within that years the lady has suffered a lot no the act has came into existence and there is a provision also that when a woman filed a complaint before the committee a committee has to be constituted that is a local committee or internal committee of the office so internal committee or the local committee has to decide this that complaint within 7 days but here no complaint has to be decided with this seven this provision is in the act but it has not been implemented yet that that the lady has to be given immediate relief how to give immediate relief if that provision has to be implemented immediately as per the provision act is there that act has to be implemented that provision in that has to be implemented it is mentioned in the act also that that uh, that if a person a lady filed a complaint for sexual harassment at a workplace local committee or the uh, this uh, internal committee to take cognizance of that complaint and within 7 day to report to the sho to file a fir if the complaint uh, uh, prove uh, prove if the allegations in the uh, complaint prove 
then they have to take within seven days. But here, nothing has been mentioned because a lady filed a complaint for sexual harassment. It took years to decide that whether a sexual harassment has been done with her or not. And when that will has to be decided, either the lady has uh, lost the case or the complaint has uh, to be gone. So my, my I am before this only before this this that is that that they have to be take some courses to implement these provisions which are already in the act regarding that all also that uh, uh, domestic uh, regarding domestic violence. My, they, um, um, I am in with this opinion that that a provisions has to be made to to make that enactments or the provisions in the act as simple as it so that every person, every lady, woman who is a victim of this has to uh, 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 has to know about the rights, what her actual rights in that. Here the woman doesn't know that they have right in the property also. No Supreme Court has laid on a landmark judgment recently regarding the rights of property in co-personary property, rights of female in co-personary property. No, no, they do not know the mean, ladies do not know the meaning of a co-personary. They then the gender, here is the question came that the male members in the society say that co-personary is something else. So it has to be made, the provisions has to be made to make as a simple sitter to make the woman understand that what is the meaning of these all this what is their actual rights what for they have to fight so a woman come in the court in a in a, any case either either it is domestic violence or it is a, a sexual harassment case or property divorce or any case that then she has to be firstly and make understand that this case you has to be filed and this will take such and such time and you have to provide the uh, evidence uh, witnesses proof to prove your case so it become difficult for a domestic violence victim or a lady who who is a victim of a sexual harassment at a workplace or a lady who who is facing some harassment or any any supposing a woman is is facing harassment in the house where there is nobody, only husband in laws are there. Then from where she has to brought that any evidence to prove the fact that this uh, harassment has been done. So the provisions that the lady has to be taken into conflict, uh, the statement has to be taken in seriously so that that the lady that their uh, confidence has to be come in the ladies to come before that there are enactment, there are there are laws in their favor they are have the protections and these these laws are these acts are for their welfare and for their benefit also so so they so, so these provisions has to be done and firstly to may to make them understand what we have to do that is that is to make this process procedure easier so that they feel uh, easy to uh, approach the honorable court to put over their grievances. If the procedure is complicated, supposing procedure is a complicated, they put, then it becomes difficult for them to face all these atrocities which they are earlier facing also. Uh, facing also. So to make the my um, uh, uh, the, the, uh, uh, suggestion is that to make this procedure easier so that the woman gets the benefit of their rights of the enactments of the law of the acts and the provisions which are made for their benefit supposing a lady victim who is a victim of acid no in case of lakshmi versus union of india in a, a supreme court has laid on a landmark judgment by giving the benefits to acid victims also by extending the benefit of fine compensation also but here the a lady has to be given compensation after he she again approached the honorable court in our gnt in in our high court one lady is victim of acid victim the, uh, the accused has been punished for that but for getting the compensation 
which has been fixed by the honorable supreme court she has again approached the honorable court by way of writ petition for getting that compensation also that is the reason that, that is the reason the ladies are afraid to come to the court for getting their for, for their rights because they know it is a lengthy procedure so my suggestion is that to make the procedure easier to make the atmosphere comfortable to take a recourse in such a way so that so that the ladies feel feel easy to come to the court to fight for their rights and to get the benefit of that and we have also a some duty towards the society the lady all the ladies are not so educated to know about their rights so we have to make these ladies to provision that that uh, to to know about their self worth firstly they have to know about their self worth also that what they have they they can do what they can do and what they they have a right to do so to and we have to to tell them that they can do anything which which can uh, they want to do they have to do their their work of their own choices also so they have to access to the equal opportunities in the field in all kinds of recourses because in the field of education also in the field of employment also in the field of uh, 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 election also no doubt ladies has given the reservation in panchayat and municipal uh, elections also but they have to be make aware about their all the rights in some of the the, the uh, some of the uh, district also the seats have been reserved for the women but women have no knowledge about that also these seats are reserved for them and they have right to contest the election they have only right to contest the election they so a provisions or uh, any seminar or any other thing has to be done to make the uh, women aware about all their rights uh, rights so that is the that if the women are aware about their rights they can they can freely approach all the fields all the uh, even the courts to fight for their rights to get their rights in a case i have a knowledge of one of my case, case where a lady is deprived of promotion and a junior person has been given the promotion only on the account that the work is a field work and women cannot go to a field so she though senior but she was deprived from a promotion she has not filed any case then the second junior was also given promotion then she came to me and asked about that my two juniors have been superseded me then i came to know that she is a senior she has to be given promotion and under law under article 14 and 16 she has a equal right like her her male counterparts because the, she has been deprived only on the ground that it is a field work so it is difficult for the woman to go to field and do the work that was no no doubt no the women have come to know about their rights but it is a, it is a fact that sometime women have also been deprived from their legal rights and they have been deprived because they do not know about their rights they had no knowledge about that they had this right and they have right to fight for this no in 20th century women are aware and uh, uh, because of uh, this uh, digital uh, and because of all this they made aware about their rights but still still though the law landmark judgment has been passed by the honorable supreme court but what time has been taken to decide that point in a nirbhaya case it is a case of 2011 12 no 8 9 10 8 nine years have been passed to decide and laid down certain enactments after the nirbhaya case supreme court has laid on uh, amendments in the criminal uh, uh, criminal laws also so that is for the benefit no the women has a right the women has no about their rights but still 
still there is something which is lacking which is uh, which the women uh, are lacking also are lack lacking because they do not properly appreciate what they are what they have to do the there is a uh, the ladies who who made a weird who fight fight their rights law has been made but the ladies who do not know they remain inside and then they were not aware about that and because of the lengthy procedure adopted they they hesitate to approach for their rights also to fight for their rights also women empowerment simply means to give powers to the women but whether it has to be appreciated whether that in actual power has been given to the women or not in actual power has to be given it is not a simple women empowerment but actually power has to be given honorable justice minakshi has rightly said that though laws are there but still something more has to be done so my, i am before my suggestion is that for the women empowerment something more has to be done something more has to be given something more has to no uh, supreme court has also uh, uh, every uh, judgment which has been landmark judgment honorable justice minakshi and uh, my senior colleague dr sudhir has mentioned but uh, supreme court also laid on a landmark judgment regarding a rape of minor wife it says if a court with a minor wife is also a rape so it is also a where here uh, the, the uh, it means the per, a person marries with a minor girl then he, he uh, the, the the parents of minor girl does not did, uh, did not know that the age of a girl is what is the age of a girl for marriage ma'am मैम आपने हमें इतने इतने वैल्यूएबल सजेशंस दिए हैं इतना कुछ हमें बताया इसके लिए आपका मैं धन्यवाद करना चाहती हूँ एंड वन वन मोर थिंग आई वांट टू से डेट वी हमें वी हैव टू गिव मेक द वुमेंस अंडरस्टैंड टू टू हैव पावर टू रेगुलेट एंड कंट्रोल देयर लाइफ within their uh, within and outside the house they have given a choice to have a power to regulate their own lives so that so that they must know that they have, they are also superior they are also equal they have also uh, equal rights with the male genders also so my suggestions are that that this has to be made that uh, the some deco- uh, the Uh, judicial system judiciary has to take some uh, decision to make the process not lengthy but a simple sitter so that the women can recognize can fight can fight their rights can 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 come to the court with a free uh, mind mind uh, uh, and they know about their rights that what are their rights also thank you ma'am for the beautiful concluding remarks ने प्रेरणादायक विश्लेषण से हमारा मार्गदर्शन करने और हमारा मनोबल बढ़ाने के लिए आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद अब मैं अपने तमाम श्रोताओं से ये जरूर कहना चाहूंगी कि अभी तो शुरुआत है बात करनी है उन अधिकारों की उन बदलावों की जिन्होंने आपकी हमारी हमारे भारत की जिंदगी बदलनी है लेकिन इसके लिए जरूरी है हमारी ऐसी तमाम वेबिनार से जुड़े रहने की जो अखिल भारतीय अधिवक्ता परिषद आपके लिए समय समय पर आयोजित करती रहेगी लेकिन अभी मैं इनवाइट करना चाहूंगी मिसेस कमला जी को महिला प्रमुख उत्तर प्रदेश टू गिव अ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स टू आर लर्नर्ड स्पीकर्स एंड आर ग्रेट ऑडियंस ओवर टू कमला जी सबको मेरा प्रणाम सबको मेरा सबसे पहले तो मैं मीरा जी आपको धन्यवाद कहना चाहूंगी कि आपने अपने मधुर स्वर में और सुगठित स्वरों में इतनी अच्छी आपने व्यवस्था करी इतना अच्छा बोला एंकरिंग की तो उसके लिए मैं आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देती हूँ 
और कंक्लूजन भी आपने कर ही दिया मुझे तो केवल बस धन्यवाद देना है आज का ये वेबिनार है वो अहिल्या बाई देवी अहिल्या बाई होलकर के नाम से है देवी अहिल्या बाई होलकर को देवी माना गया उनके कृत्यों से उनके कर्मों से जो उन्होंने किया समाज के लिए किया अपने राज्य के लिए किया अपने देश के लिए किया इसलिए उन ऐसे ही नहीं उनका नाम उनके नाम से वेबिनार चलाया जा रहा है उन्होंने अपने जीवन में ऐसे समाज सुधार के कार्य भी किए और अपनी जनता के लिए भी किए वो रोज जनता से मिलती भी थी अल्पाई में ही उनका विवाह हो गया वो एक राज्य की महारानी भी बनी और उन्होंने बखूबी उसको निभाया उनके बेटे का भी देहांत हो गया वो हाथी पे बैठ के लड़ाई करती थी उन्होंने विधवाओं के अधिकार के लिए तमाम काम किए गोद लेने की भी प्रथा को उन्होंने आगे बढ़ाने की कोशिश करी कि जिसके संतान नहीं है वो गोद भी ले सकते हैं इस तरह उन्होंने महिलाओं के लिए बहुत ही अच्छे अच्छे काम किए तीर्थ स्थलों में मंदिरों का भी निर्माण करवाया प्रजा से रोज मिलती उनकी समस्याओं को सुनती उनका न्याय करना न्यायाधीश की तरह वो काम करती थी बाद में उसी तरह महारानी लक्ष्मीबाई ने भी किया तो मैं इस देवी अहिल्या वहां के राज्य के लोगों ने उनका नाम देवी नाम के आगे देवी लगा दिया था कि देवी अहिल्या बाई होलकर तो मैं आज उनके जीवनी के बारे में तो सब लोगों ने हमारे और बहनों ने बहुत सारी बातें बताई हैं मैं आगे धन्यवाद देने के लिए ही आई हूँ तो मैं माननीय माननीय जस्टिस मीनाक्षी मेहता जी का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करती हूँ उन्होंने अपने सुदृढ़ शब्दों में और सुगठित शब्दों में चारांश में ही कहा थोड़े ही समय में पूरा हमारे महिलाओं को जितने भी संविधान में संरक्षण प्राप्त है संविधान में आर्टिकल 15 दिए गए हैं संरक्षण दिए गए हैं उसको बखूबी उन्होंने हमें बताया जिससे हमें उससे बहुत ही अमूल्य जानकारी का खजाना मिल गया जैसे बहुत छोटे में समझाया और कोई ऐसी बात छूटी नहीं कि जो न रह गई हो तमाम जो महिलाओं के लिए कानून बनाए गए हैं समय तो बहुत कम था लेकिन तीनों लोगों ने वक्त मुख्य वक्ताओं ने ऐसा हमें समझाया कि हम कृत कृत्य हो गए हैं मैं माननीय मीनाक्षी मेहता जी का बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करती हूँ हम उनके व्याख्यान से बहुत ही अनुग्रहित हुए हैं और मुझे आशा और उम्मीद है कि हमारे श्रोतागण भी बहुत ही लाभान्वित हुए होंगे हमारी जो महिला बहनें हैं उनके भविष्य में उनके उनके संरक्षण के लिए जो भी कानून बने हुए हैं उनका कैसे इस्तेमाल करना है कैसे उनके साथ उसकी प्रक्रिया कैसी है उन्हें ज्ञान हो गया होगा इसका माननीय मीनाक्षी लेखी जी ने यह भी कहा कि वैदिक काल में हमारी महिलाओं की स्थिति क्या थी प्राचीन काल में स्थिति क्या थी वैदिक काल में माता के स्वरूप माना जाता था प्राचीन काल में भी विदुषी हुआ करती थी महिलाएं मैत्रेयी गार्गी अनुसुईया जैसे हमारी जो विदुषी महिलाएं थी उनको बराबर का अधिकार दिया जाता था कालांतर में जो धीरे धीरे महिलाओं की स्थिति खराब होने लगी तब हमें कानून महिलाओं के प्रति जो रोकने के लिए जो अपराध हो रहे हैं उनके लिए कानून जो बनाए गए उसकी आवश्यकता हमको पड़ी और जब हमारा भारत स्वतंत्र हुआ तो हमारे संविधान ने हमको संरक्षण प्रदान किए खास करके आर्टिकल 15 में महिलाओं के लिए और पुरुषों के लिए बराबर का अधिकार दे दिया गया यही एक ऐसा था कि लिंग भेद जन्म आदि के आधार पे हमें अलग नहीं किया जा सकता समान रूप से अधिकार होगा और यही समानता का अधिकार आगे तक भी इसी को आधार मान करके आपराधिक विधि में भी हमको ये धीरे धीरे अधिकार और हमारे लिए कानून बना बनते चले गए तो मैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद मीनाक्षी माननीय मीनाक्षी जी का करती हूँ और हम आपके उद्बोधन से बहुत अनुग्रहित हुए हैं और बार बार पुनः मैं आपको धन्यवाद करती हूँ हमारे वरिष्ठ अधिवक्ता सीनियर जो वरिष्ठ अधिवक्ता है नंद नंद जोग जी नंदरा जोग जी हैं वो उन्होंने तो विस्तार से बताया विस्तार से हर एक जो हमारे लिए कानून बने हुए हैं उसमें एक एक करके बताया 
वो पूरे का नाम मैं नहीं ले सकती हूँ क्योंकि सारा समय उतने उतनी देर में चला जाएगा मैं उनका बहुत ही धन्यवाद उन्होंने अपने अमूल्य अमूल्य समय दे करके और ये हमें अमूल्य जानकारी दी है उसके लिए हम कृत कृत्य हो गए हैं हम आपका आभार कभी नहीं भूलेंगे और आपके सदैव आभारी रहेंगे मुझे पूरी उम्मीद है कि मेरे जितने भी श्रोता गण हैं उनको ये हो गई हम यही कहते हैं कि कानून तो बन गए हैं महिलाओं के संरक्षण के लिए लेकिन उसकी जानकारी उनको नहीं है जानकारी क्यों नहीं है उनके अंदर शिक्षा का अभाव है बहुत कम महिलाएं पढ़ी लिखी हैं अभी तो धीरे धीरे स्तर बढ़ा है लेकिन अभी भी हमारी बहुत दयनीय स्थिति है शिक्षा के क्षेत्र में इसलिए हम इस कानून को जान नहीं पाते हैं और बहुत सी महिलाएं जो गाँव में रहती है जो कानून से उनका दूर दूर बना नहीं है उन्हें भी इसके बारे में कुछ मालूम नहीं रहता है हमें इसके बारे में जानकारी अभी ये भी अभिनार है यहाँ पे तो हम अधिवक्ता लोग ही हैं, अधिकतर अधिवक्ता होंगे वैसे ही जनता कम होगी तो हम हमें तो बहुत कुछ जानकारी है लेकिन जो एक धूल की परत जम गई थी वो आज हमारी ताजा हो गई है और हमें सारी चीजें पुरानी जो हमने पढ़ी थी और काफी समय से सबके पास सब विषय नहीं आते हैं तो वो धीरे धीरे परत जम जाती है तो वो फिर से ताजा हो गया मैं आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद करती हूँ आपने ये भी कहा कि बहुत से कानून तो बने हुए हैं महिलाओं के लिए लेकिन आगे भी और अधिक कानून बनाए जाने की आवश्यकता है तो मैं इसके लिए आपको बहुत बहुत ऋणी रहेंगी महिला जितनी भी महिलाएं हैं वो ऋणी रहेंगी और वो चाहती है कि कानून बने लेकिन उसके साथ साथ मैं उनके लिए भी ये कहूंगी कि केवल कानून बनाने से ही काम नहीं होगा हमें कानून का भी साथ देना पड़ेगा उसका कभी दुरुपयोग न करें और सबसे पहले हमारे अंदर जागरूकता लानी पड़ेगी तो बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद जी नांद जोग जी और मैं फिर से आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देती हूँ अपनी तरफ से मैं सभी श्रोताओं की तरफ से आपको बहुत आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ इसके बाद तो वरिष्ठ अधिवक्ता हमारी दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट की वरिष्ठ अधिवक्ता है उन्होंने ये कहा कि कार्यान्वयन कैसे होगा कार्यान्वयन कैसे हो पाएगा जो भी हम कार्य करते हैं जैसे घरेलू हिंसा है अगर घरेलू हिंसा किसी महिला के साथ हो जाती है तो हम क्या प्रक्रिया अपनाएंगे अगर किसी के साथ सेक्सुअल हेरासमेंट होता है तो हम क्या प्रक्रिया अपनाएंगे ये इन्होंने विस्तार से बताया और पूरी प्रक्रिया शुरू से अंत तक बता दी हम उससे बहुत ही लाभान्वित हुए हैं और हम आपका बहुत बहुत आभार व्यक्त करते हैं आगे भी लाभान्वित होते रहेंगे हमारी श्रोता बहनें भी बहुत लाभान्वित हुई है और हम आपके बहुत रेडी रहेंगे आपने हमारे लिए समय निकाला और यहाँ पर आई बहुत विस्तार से सब हर एक की, की जानकारी आपने दिया तो उसके लिए मैं आपको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद ज्ञापित करती हूँ और उम्मीद से इस उम्मीद से कि फिर से कभी ऐसा मौका मिला तो आप सब हमारे इस वेबिनार में या कोई भी वेबिनार इस तरह के सीरीज चलती है तो आप हमारे इसमें आग्रह पे आएंगे और ताकि हम आपके इस व्याख्यान से इस मधुर बातों से हम लाभान्वित होंगे इसके साथ ही मैं अपने संपूर्ण श्रोता गणों को जो इंस्टाग्राम पे है जो यूट्यूब पे है जो फेसबुक पे है जितने भी माध्यम से जो भी श्रोता गण है मैं उन सबको बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद देती हूँ और ये भी आ, कहती हूँ कि आपने इतना समय नवरात्र के समय में हमें दिया उसके लिए बहुत बहुत आपको धन्यवाद लेकिन निश्चित रूप से मैं जानती हूँ कि आप लाभान्वित हुए होंगे और जितने श्रोता होंगे उनको तो कानून के बारे में जानकारी हो ही गई होगी कि महिलाओं के लिए कितने भी कानून के कितने संरक्षण प्राप्त हैं और उसे जो है हमें ए, हमेशा याद रखना चाहिए कभी हमारे साथ कोई इस तरह की बात गलत हो तो हम उसे न भूलें मैं इसके साथ ही इस वेबिनार के आयोजकों को भी धन्यवाद देती हूँ और मैं उनको बहुत उनका आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ इसलिए कि इतनी अमूल्य जानकारी और इतनी मेहनत जिन्होंने किया 
पर्दे के सामने तो आप हैं और पर्दे के पीछे भी आयोजन में जितने लोगों ने भी सहयोग किया उसका मैं बहुत बहुत आभार व्यक्त करती हूँ धन्यवाद कमला जी आपने बहुत खूबसूरत ढंग से सबका धन्यवाद किया और मैं अखिल भारतीय अधिवक्ता परिषद की ओर से ऑनरेबल जज मिसेस मीनाक्षी आय मेहता जी हमारे सीनियर एडवोकेट सुधीर नंदराजोग जी और सुरेंद्र कौर जी का हार्दिक धन्यवाद करती हूँ इसके अतिरिक्त अखिल भारतीय अधिवक्ता परिषद के तमाम कार्यकर्ता जो इस कार्यक्रम से जुड़े रहे और जिन्होंने अपने परिश्रम और सहयोग से इसको सफल बनाने का पूरा प्रयास किया और हमारे श्रोतागण उन सभी को मैं पुनः पुनः धन्यवाद देती हूँ और अंत में हम इस वेबिनार का समापन करते हैं और इस उम्मीद ये उम्मीद करते हैं कि फिर हम बार बार इसी तरह से जुड़ते रहेंगे बात करते रहेंगे अधिकारों की बात बदलावों की बात धन्यवाद